The title of today's Brandon's blog is Stalking Horse Bitter, our simple yet great step-by-step -step guide for selling distressed company assets. In today's Brandon's blog, Brandon goes through a real life case study, one of our current files as to why we believe using a stalking horse sales process is the right way to go for this particular group of assets. My name is Ira Smith, president of Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. Both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions you may have, either about this Brandon's blog or anything else at all. So shoot us a message, give us a phone call. We would love to speak with you. I hope you can watch until the end of this video because I know you will get value from it. So first, Brandon goes through what is a stalking horse bidder. And in very simple language, a stalking horse bidder is a potential buyer who is willing to negotiate an agreement of purchase and sale and then let their bid stand as the minimum floor price for everyone to see in a court approved sales process. And then for other potential purchasers to determine whether or not they wish to bid more than the stalking horse offer. The real life example that Brandon goes through is a current file of ours. Now, because we don't have court approval yet for the stalking horse bid or the sales process, he couldn't reveal any names or specific details that you would only find out upon doing your due diligence, but there's enough information to be able to explain the process. We are currently the court appointed receiver of a green tech technology company. When we took possession of the assets, we saw there was a lot of deferred maintenance, which negatively affected the revenue generating capacity of, of this group of green technology assets. So with being able to borrow certain funds and the cash that was being generated from the operation of the business, we were able to do a sufficient amount of maintenance in order to increase the revenue generation of the group of assets. We also had someone in the industry contacting us saying they wanted to look further to consider purchasing the assets. So we thought that a stocking horse process would work the best for this group of assets. So we simply asked them, if you get to see the information and if you wish to put in an offer, will you be willing to let your offer stand as a stocking horse bid? because that's the basis we will let you get a first look before anyone else at this information. And they said, yes. So we had them sign a non-disclosure agreement. They then did their due diligence and they then submitted a letter of intent to purchase the assets. We are right now having our lawyer and their lawyer agree on the terms of an agreement of purchase and sale, their offer, what other terms and conditions they want, what other terms and conditions we need, what their break fee will be if they are not the successful bidder. And if we have to hold an auction between them and one or more other bidders whose offers we like, we have to set the up level, each bid, succeeding bid has to go up by in order for 
those purchasers to still be in the auction process. So what are the benefits to us as receiver and what are the benefits to the stocking horse bidder? Well, the stocking horse bidder, as I mentioned, gets first look with no real time constraints and no competition at the information and to negotiate with us, the receiver, to set the terms and conditions that we can both live with. Once we get that and the stocking horse sales process approved by the court, every other bidder is stuck with that specific agreement of purchase and sale and its terms and conditions. To the bidder, there's an advantage that if they're not the successful purchaser, they get a break fee and some expense reimbursement to cover them for their time and cost in doing the due diligence and being willing to expose their offer to the marketplace as the stocking horse. For us, the vendor, we get a good look to understand what the floor price will be and to negotiate that floor price and get it set. So we know that there are no offers that can come in below that floor price. What we have to do next is then go to court, get our sales process and that specific stocking horse agreement of purchase and sale approved by the court. We can then sign it with the stocking horse purchaser and then embark on a sales process knowing that any price we get for those assets will be more and that the court has already given any stakeholder who's party to the litigation that created the receivership a chance to oppose or object to any of those sale terms or the minimum price. Once it's approved by the court, we can only do better, not worse, and we know that our terms and conditions are fair and reasonable because the court has told us that it is. So I hope you can read the entire Brandon's blog below because I know you will find it informative. Again, both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions you may have either about this Brandon's blog or anything else at all. So shoot us a message, give us a phone call. We would love to speak with you.